Hello everyone, I'm Nate Truex and you're listening to the Crockcast Podcast. Welcome to the Crockcast Podcast, I'm your host Nate, and today I'm joined by Miss Adeline Robinson, a renowned reptile artist. Adeline, thanks for coming to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. So, do you want to get us start off on your, how you first got into reptiles and kind of your career path leading up to this point? Yeah, totally. Why you chose to be a reptile artist it's all it, it's funny because it, it's all something that ended up snowballing by chance and it's something i actually never expected to do um i never really set out to do it but i have been keeping reptiles since i was really little hello everyone welcome to the crockcast podcast i'm your host nate and today i'm joined by miss adeline robinson a renowned reptile artist adeline thanks for coming to the show hey thanks for having me so, uh, do you want to get us start off on your how you first got into reptiles and kind of your career path leading up to this point? Yeah, totally. Why you chose to be a reptile artist? It's all it, it's funny because it it's all something that ended up snowballing by chance, and it's something I actually never expected to do. Um, I never really set out to do it, but I have been keeping reptiles since I was really little. Um, I was lucky enough to grow up in a household where my parents, before I was born, had retics, and I grew up with ball pythons and beardies and a little bit of everything at home. Um, and then simultaneously, I was also drawing a lot of animals, mostly horses and dragons and stuff like that. But um, I did both side by side, but fairly separately for a long time. Um, I did a lot of artwork in high school, and then in high school is when I started getting more involved with um, like the herp societies and going to reptile shows. And, uh, after my first show, I just kind of got super addicted, like a lot of people do and just started keeping and breeding a big variety. Um, all while working at pet stores and mom and pop wildlife centers and, um, being able to work with animals full time, which was awesome. So the path that ended up leading me towards reptile art, um, started when I actually left the state to go work at a auction house as a graphic designer. And so I left the pet store. I left the community that I was just really close with and all my friends at all were keepers as well and got away from it. And it honestly, (laughs) the first six months working there were great. And then it really just sucked the drained the life out of me. The uh, workplace was pretty toxic and just not a good, it, it wasn't a good time. Um, so I started picking up drawing after work just to kind of get myself back into what I loved because I was away from everything for so long. Um, so I started a Inktober challenge and did that for fun. So every night for the month of October, I would work off of a prompt list and do tiny one inch squares of animal art. And one inch squares because I had no time to do any art with my full time job. So um that's all i really had time for and sure enough reptile friends started seeing my artwork and asking if i could draw their animals and then i'd draw their animals and it kind of snowballed into hey would you be able to do my logo and i'm like well i don't really know but i can try and um soon enough i was spending basically all my evenings until the wee hours of the morning drawing doing logos Um, different portrait commissions of different reptiles. And I just kind of got to the point where it was fulfilling. I was happy to kind of be back in the community, even though I was fairly isolated geographically from everybody. And um, I was able to, to make enough where I could quit my, my nine to five and do reptile art full time. So it was terrifying. I've always been employed by somebody. I've always worked at pet stores or wildlife centers. So it was my first time ever venturing on my own um but i am so happy i did it and it's one of the best best decisions i've ever made gotcha so uh you mentioned you do portraits and you do logos uh is there anything else you do with your business or is that the extent of it so i actually the the majority part of the business is doing fine artwork and then making prints and stickers and apparel um different products that people can have the artwork on has been a lot of fun. So I mostly have the shop. And now I, when I first started, I was primarily commission based because I was new and I didn't know, and I was nervous and 
you know, trying to get every job that I could get. Uh, but now I've kind of scaled back on them and I, I only take a select amount to make sure I don't overload myself so I can continue doing fine artwork and uh, bring affordable art to the shows and make mm -hmm. stickers and all kinds of just fun stuff. So, you know, you grew up around reptiles all the time. You've worked for reptiles your whole life. So, do you, like, you have any of your own? Yeah, I actually keep tree monitors. Uh, I had a cut back on my collection a little bit when I moved. Um, going to so many shows has definitely kind of, I guess, uh, taken a lot of my time away from sitting at home and focusing on keeping. So, I've downsized a little bit, but I still have a couple pairs of tree monitors and I breed red lined gargoyle geckos. So those are, that's kind of like all it's down to now, um, but it's nice because it's, it's manageable. When I had a really big collection, it was really hard to keep up with everything, trying to get artwork done, trying to take care of the animals, make sure everything's chip shaped. So um, now I get to visit my friends' collections and go to different facilities when I go out of state for shows. I always try to hit up zoos, um, different friends' collections and check everybody else's stuff out. So when you do a commission or anything like that, is there any, any particular thing you're looking for in like uh, the source material? Yes, actually. Um, and that's something that I that I almost have to like make a little infographic of. So when I work off of my reference, I always look for a high detailed crisp image in a really good or flattering pose of the animal. Um, sometimes I get sent fo like cell phone photos that are really blurry and people are like, Hey, could you draw this? I'm like, I can, but it's not going to come close to being as detailed as, uh, the work that I'm typically known for. So there's some stuff that I can, um, I kind of adjust or work with. So say we've got the pose of one animal and the pattern of another animal, you know, I have no problem with being able to combine things. Um, but when it comes to like individual details or an individual photo that somebody wants photorealistic usually as crisp as possible is kind of what i'm looking for so is there any particular type of animal you prefer drawing over uh, others i am personally very drawn to horses and vipers <laughs> those seem to be my top two favorite uh creatures to draw um horses because they're just super familiar and it's what i've been kind of around the longest and vipers because they have so many cool colors and textures and healed scales versus smooth scales and their pits and the, the shape of their heads just fascinates me. And there's like an endless amount of variety and color and pattern and um, they're just so much fun. I never get tired of them. And, and sometimes I almost have to stop myself. I'm like, all right, like do some other animals that people are looking for, not just all vipers because that's I'd probably just sit and draw vipers all day if I had nothing else to do. Yeah, some, especially the arboreal vipers are in contention for being the most beautiful reptiles on the planet, so. Yeah, they're some of my favorites. They're just insane. Like, and there's always something new, too. You know, you, you feel like you see quite a bit, and then some photographer posts a, a photo of something I've never seen before, and I'm, like, mind-blown all over again when I draw it. Yeah. So, I, no I noticed uh, last year's uh, Croc Fest did, did a specialty commission artwork for the auction uh do you do anything any other sort of stuff like that or is that just like that one event um actually i do quite quite a bit um i do pretty much all of the usarc auctions at the narbc shows so typically i'll do a live drawing on saturday or i'll i'll do live painting during the show so people will come and check it out and see the progress from start to finish and then it'll get donated to the auction at the end of the day so that's usually a lot of fun um so I've got a couple projects that I'll be bringing to Tinley this upcoming weekend, which will be a blast. But yeah, Crockfest. Uh, there's been a couple other conservation fundraisers that have been a part of as well, where I'll do something custom and donate like a, a custom canvas print of it or something fun and unique. Gotcha. So uh, you mentioned you did that, and you also do Tinley and some other events. Uh, so do you do a lot of uh, these NRBC or higher, I um, guess, larger events or? just you just do a handful um i've cut back a little bit just because when i'm on the road every weekend it takes so much time to prepare for a show that i don't get any artwork done in between especially when i've got back-to-back -back shows so it's it's a little bit tricky trying to find the right rhythm where i can get home i can get some artwork done and get some new pieces prepped and then go to the next show so when there's a lot of back-to-back -back shows it doesn't 
happen as much as I would like. So I've cut back quite a bit. I'm doing, um, I'm still doing all the NARBC shows this year. I'm doing Animal Con. Uh, there's a couple other Reptilian Nation shows that I'll be doing and I'll, I'll do Daytona. But yeah, I've, I've, I'm cutting back on them a little bit just so that we have got time to actually do artwork. <laughs> so big part of it. Yeah. All right. So uh, if you're not basing off of the commissioner or something like that, and you're creating something entirely sort of original. Uh, what's sort of your creative process and like deciding what you're going to draw, the pose, uh, lighting, all that sort of stuff? So a lot of what I base my pieces off of, I'm very grateful because I have a lot of photography friends. I have a lot of friends that breed a huge variety of different species. So I'm grateful that I can just usually hop on Facebook and go, hey guys, I'm looking for this species. Got any reference photos you mind? Um, and so I'll have some some people send me some stuff. Sometimes I, I if I can't quite find what I'm looking for, but I find, like I said, a pose of one individual animal and then the coloration of another, sometimes I'll do, um, you know, I'll kind of stitch them together, almost Frankenstein style. Uh, so sometimes they're either my animals, animals that I've photographed, friends have photographed, pretty much all of the artwork that uh, I have available. I could tell you where that animal came from and who it belongs to or who photographed it and and uh, where it came from. Because I, I don't want to just go on Google and just find random photos to use. Um, it's nice when the animal has a backstory or there's there's something behind it. So, uh, has there been, ever been a particular piece that you've made that you feel particularly proud of? Or is that your, um, might be your favorite? Yeah, and it, it does change from time to time, but one staple actually is the Gariel piece up there. So I did that. Uh, that was the first custom I had ever done for a croc fest. And the reference photo was from my good friend Jason that uh, he works at Zoo Tampa and sent me photos of the Gariels there. And, you know, I'm all pumped up. I'm going to do this, this donation piece. And then I realized I've never drawn hyper-realistic water before. So I was super terrified. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, I don't know if I can do this. Um, but I, I created the piece and I sent it off. And I think it was a few months later, <laughs> I saw that there was a Copic Award um that was coming up and they were taking submissions so cope the copic markers are what i use and what i did that piece with so they're a high fine art ma marker that's based in um it's alcohol based and uh so the, every year they've got a big award i submitted it last minute it was on japanese time and so i was trying to time it right and i had like 10 minutes that i saw the ad and jumped on the computer and tried to submit it and i'm hitting enter and refreshing the page and sure enough you know I, I refresh it and it says submissions are closed and so i'm like man i hope i got in i don't even know if it got in or not um oh well and then i forget about it for months and one day randomly in my email i get a little thing that pops up that says oh check out the winners i'm like oh sweet i bet there are a lot of cool people won like that has to be that has to be some awesome art in there i want to look at it because it, it's just got to be cool and I'm scrolling and the Gariel piece is in there. And I was like, that's not right. Uh, there's got to be like a glitch or something. So I refreshed it like three times and it was in there and there was judges notes and it got the regional award for North America. So that was just a huge, huge, exciting moment for me because I'd, I'd never submitted anything. It was like the last, I think the last submission out of like 3000 entrants. And um, so, yeah, that was really exciting. And uh, I'm really proud of that one because that, that water was very scary. <laughs> so have you ever won any other uh, awards for your art? That's actually the only one that I've ever submitted. So not okay. not at the moment now. Well, at least you have a 100% success rate. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm like a little nervous about, about submitting it elsewhere. But I mean, I'm, I'm sure at some point I probably will submit to the next one and, and to some other shows. Gotcha. So what advice would you give someone who's looking to draw any sort of reptile? Like is there any like tips or tricks for drawing certain species or, uh, the, the biggest thing, cause I mean, there's the, the wonderful thing about art is anybody can do it. 
because there's a million different styles, a million different techniques. There's no right or wrong way of doing it. I'm friends with a lot of sculptors, people that will do simplistic, really cute artwork of reptiles, people that do photorealism, um, different sculptors, you know, a, a little bit of everything. And so I think for me, the biggest piece of advice I would give to people is to try different mediums and to explore different techniques. And if you find one that you really enjoy, stick with it, even when it gets frustrating. One of the biggest things I hear at the shows is, oh man, I, I can't even draw a stick figure. Oh, my drawings suck, so I don't draw. I'm like, well, there's only one way to fix that. And that's by continuing to practice it. And it's not easy to do. And it gets frustrating. I still get frustrated with my pieces. Um, and it's something that, you know, the better you get, the higher of a standard you hold yourself to. So it can just, if you are in your head, it can never get better. You could just stay frustrated and mad um, because you're not happy with how you're progressing or, or you're critiquing your pieces and you're tearing them apart. But that's not necessarily how you get better or how you, how you, how you get enjoyment out of it. Um, I think people need to understand that that's just part of the process and it's a good thing because it means you're learning from it and you apply it to the next piece and um, to just enjoy their time creating rather than focusing on perfection. So that's kind of the number one thing I hear from a lot of people is that they're not happy because they're not good at it. You don't need to be good at it. So you mentioned earlier that Gabe will reach out to like a lot of people, see other people's collections and stuff like that. So what have been, I guess we've been on kind of a couple of uh, reptile adventures more or less. Uh, Want to talk about that at all? Yeah, um, I, it's it's wonderful because it's all... I feel I still feel like it's all very new and still all very exciting. So, like I said, I've spent my whole life working at pet stores at uh, a really awesome wildlife center with a lot of really cool species. But I had only ever gone to local shows. I have never traveled much, and uh, so Tinley Park and Sewer Fest were the only two shows I'd ever really been to for like ten years. And then, as of 2020, it was my first time going out of state for a show. So being able to see the diversity of not only what people are looking for at different shows, but the different habitats of these different shows, you know, going down to Florida and being able to look for pygmy rattlesnakes and finding a baby was just amazing and super exciting. Being able to see alligators. I'm from the Midwest. I'm like right by Chicago. There's not much out here, <laughs> especially when you're surrounded by farmland and, you know, the, the small little conservation areas are great, but there there just isn't a whole lot of diversity. Um, so actually being able to travel, going to Florida, seeing gators everywhere, seeing babies, like just, I feel like, a, what is it, a month ago, we went and saw mom with nine babies. And it was just such a cool, surreal moment of pretty much everything I've always been wanting to do, travel check out herps in their natural habitats. Um, going out west, I went to a Salt Lake City show um, last summer, and we went out to the salt flats and hiked a bunch of mountains and found horned lizards everywhere. And it was so cool and just so awesome actually being able to see them just doing their thing and basking and hanging out. One of them um, let me get real close to them. Like I actually got my perfect reference photo that I was dreaming about. Didn't it expect to actually be able to get it and um sure enough he was out there and he he posed for me and i got my reference photo so being able to actually go out in the field get my own photos and um you know not disturb the animals and just check them out is is just super fun for me so i really hope to do more traveling i love being out west uh it's just such a different um everything about it's different honestly like i've seen so many documentaries and books and you know so so much photography of like canyons and all the mesas and the plateaus and deserts i've drawn deserts i had never been to a desert and i finally went and it was like mind-blowing so my goal is hopefully to get out there again this year and do some herping and find some snakes and uh looking for looking for rattlesnakes that would be super fun so yeah so you kind of already answered my follow-up question about uh, there's any other particular places you want looking forward to going to or not, but I've still never been to California, so I feel like it'd be cool to to check out maybe some areas out there. Um, 
going back out west again it's probably i actually haven't been to the everglades yet i've been to florida quite a few times but i never realized how big florida was (laughs) until i had to go for a show and i was like i've got like eight things i want to do while we're down Mm -hmm. here and it's like a weekend and i have to like you know go to the go go to the show then the show and then we've got a couple days to get home but i still need to get home to my animals and um you know to everything so there, every time I go down there, I try to do one thing or the other. So I went to, to Gatorland one time and then in wild Florida, another visited a friend's place, uh, went to, you know, go check out alligators. So I try to do at least one or two things every time we go to a show. So checking out, uh, I think one, one show we were able to hit up three zoos in three days. So that was a lot of fun. So being able to see, you know, what the different zoos had and taking reference photos, but yeah. Definitely want to hit up the Everglades. Would like to just continue exploring kind of down south and out west for the most part. Um, Those are kind of the main places that I want to go in the States. But outside of that, Ecuador is kind of number one on my list right now as as a goal, destination goal. Uh, Any particular reason for that? I'm part Ecuadorian. And so that's kind of something I've always wanted to do in general. Most of my family's been, but I never have quite been able to make it over there. So... Um, part of it is a family aspect and another part of it is just the amazing herping and I'm so jealous because so many of my friends have been there on like herping tours of the Galapagos Islands and I'm like over here just dreaming of it so I'm hoping to to make that happen too because they've got just so many amazing species so many frogs uh it would be absolutely wicked to you know find some bushmaster or you know yeah cool stuff yeah, I almost yeah. did it one time uh, back in summer 2019. My aunt and uncle were going to the Galapagos and they asked if I wanted to go. Oh, really? But I just got, but I just got done with a month long internship, so I was flat broke. So. Yeah, that's the hard part. <laughs> yeah. But gotta gotta start a little piggy bank and set it on my <laughs> set it on my wall. Yeah. So, are there any particular species that you're looking forward to maybe doing a piece on in the future? Honestly, there's so many, and there's actually quite a few that I can't name. So I'll, I do this thing where I scroll through Facebook and I find a bunch of cool reference photos and I save them. Uh, sometimes it's species that I'm familiar with already that it's a cool pose or just like a really cool scene that I want to recreate. Other times it's um, you know something that I've just never heard of. Not always the greatest photo, but I want to delve into it and do some more research to to do some um you know habitat or scenery in it as well to kind of do like a whole piece so that's that's kind of the direction i'd like to go in of course i'm going to always want to keep drawing vipers um but i think a big part of what interests me outside of that is just a lot of neat and dangerous species that people may not be very familiar with um i'm kind of attracted to like the weirder animals i guess so i i'm pretty excited i just did one piece um a few days ago that I haven't released yet, which I'm excited to, but I've been wanting to draw uh, that guy for a long time. A um, bunch of different monitor species would be cool. Um, it's hard. It's hard to pinpoint one because there's just so many. I honestly kind of want to draw everything. Um, I, I do have to say, though, I, I get a little bit... Um, I have a hard time focusing and getting myself to do some of the more common pet species just because I feel like I've spent a lot of time with them. But when I kind of go back to the roots of where that animal came from, wild type animals, the you know different localities of those animals, that kind of piques my interest and gets me back into it again. So there is, you know, I'd love to do a ball python poster of the wild type localities and mutations because that's what interests me personally is the animals in the wild how they are naturally um as opposed to you know once they get fiddled with by us yeah uh, so if people uh wanted to commission you to draw a picture with their animal or something like that uh, how would they get in contact with you um, yeah so typically i ask everybody to check out my website and to take a look at that because i've got all my commission information and my pricing and my logo information on there and then to let me know if there's something that they're interested in um depending on my availability because i've i do have shows so i have to let everybody know like it, it is a bit of a tight schedule depending on you know the time of year 
Um, so I've got all my information on my website, AdelineRobinsonArt.com. Usually a lot of people contact me through Facebook or Instagram or email, which is AdelineRobinsonArt at gmail.com. So um, pretty, pretty easy to get hold of. Gotcha. So uh, like, as we mentioned earlier, you did that uh, a few pieces for Crockfest. Uh, are there any other events that you do specialty pieces for? Um, I did one for HCI for one of their auctions a while back. Um, there's been a couple others, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. I've done a few like charity auctions as well for individuals going through difficult or health related issues where sometimes I'll draw if they're if there's like an animal that they breed that they're well known for, I'll draw that animal and I've donated the original to, um, you know, a charity auction for that person. But I'm hoping to work with a couple more um, conservation groups. I just got the information from someone at one of the last shows I was at that works with some really cool hawksbill sea turtles. And I think it would be really cool to get involved with that because um, kind of one of my main goals when I started doing this, which again, I never quite expected to, but to not only continue to better my artwork and to try to be the best artist I can, but I would like to try to give back to the animals that inspire me to do what I do. So I'm always trying to trying to help out different conservation groups, or if I get invited to, you know, auctions or fundraisers, I try to donate to them. So uh, is there any particular favorite medium or material you use? like using for your artwork? I mostly do a lot of my pieces yeah. in Copic markers. So here I'll show you, I got a bunch of them right in front of me right now. Um, so these are the alcohol-based markers from Japan that are a lot of fun. I'm just super enamored with them. They're a blast to work with. So initially when I bought them, I just did a tiny little gray pack just to test them out and uh, went head over heels and uh, ended up getting all of them. <laughs> So the Copic markers are kind of the main medium that I use for a lot of my high detail realism, but I also enjoy painting. I just, uh, with so much attention on the Copics, I haven't been doing as much painting as I would like, but I recently did an, a big acrylic piece and I'm hoping to do some more painting this year just because it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a totally different method and a totally different medium and um, I've kind of always enjoyed it. So. Um, that and oils it'd be nice to get back into oils yeah, speaking of paintings i think i actually might have a one of your paintings a canvas print of a crocodile monitor so oh nice right on oh wait my reptile rooms so can't really go and grab it at the moment but yeah <laughs> yeah i love collecting herp artwork as well here i don't know if you can I'll tell this so that's only part of it I um, like collecting from other artists and I'm friends with a lot of other artists. So I always love picking up prints and stickers from them. So I've got a bunch of artwork here behind me and then in my room and I've got a really big staircase and it's just all filled with herp art all the way down. So I'm, I'm kind of running out of wall space. So I have to start swapping some stuff out, but yeah, it's fun to collect. Like there, there's just, like I said, such a big diversity in styles and different mediums different approaches to to different animals so i i love all of it honestly <laughs> yeah so you mentioned you have a you keep tree monitors on uh, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. anything else you're interested in getting into keeping in the future at all um if i had unlimited time and resources i'd probably continue the tree monitors a bit more um i had cordensis I've got Bakari and I've got Macrii and um, I was hoping to get into Rising Gary and I had one Prasinus, but I was hoping to do like trios of everything um, just because they have been my hands down favorite species to work with. So, you know, that would maybe be a thing. I've always really loved those little arboreal vipers. That would be really cool. But um, at the moment, my, my focus is kind of not so much on captive keeping, but trying to go out into the field and see animals in the wild has kind of taken more of my my attention and my interest so i i enjoy them and i love them but i don't think i'll be acquiring any more animals anytime soon just with the schedule and traveling and um you know i want to make sure that i do right by them and give them all the attention they need so yeah. maybe yeah. we'll see animal vogels yeah um uh, 
So kind of continuation on that, is there any particular species you hope to see in the wild someday? Um, I'd love to see a Bushmaster. That's pretty high on my list. Um, gosh, there's just so many. <laughs> Um, all of them. You know, it'd be yeah, all of them. I'd love to go to Australia and hang hang out and just check out a lot of the monitors that they have there. I'd love to go, you know, go look for tree monitors in the wild. That would be super super awesome. Um, I used to breed ackies and I used to have like kangaroo monitors and stuff. Uh, I've always been wanting to go to Australia, you know, for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, finding pretty much like any species of snakes is really exciting for me. Um. As you know, there isn't a whole lot out here, so it doesn't take a whole lot for me to get super stoked when I find anything, especially when I'm out of town. But yeah, I think Australia, Indonesia, and Vietnam, um, Ecuador, those would all kind of be like some of my top areas. To go to the Galapagos and see tortoises and to see the marine iguanas would be an absolute dream. That's something I've always wanted to do. Um, being able to find, you know, Amazonian palm vipers would be a dream. So there's just everything. Gotcha. So, if, uh, uh, I guess I can't run out of questions. Uh, it's all good. I talk fast. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's just I'm not really familiar with art, so don't. Yeah. Don't I, questions fast. Oh, it's all good. I mean, it it honestly is such a it's such a large and wide topic that not a lot of people know about i actually didn't really know that much about it going into it when i first started i was like oh sweet i'm gonna be able to draw reptiles all day um and it's actually one of the smallest parts of what i do which is kind of surprising i know to not only myself but to a lot of people when they hear that they're like oh do you get to draw all day it's it's a very small portion um just when it comes to you know managing a business there's all the different aspects that you need to take care of um, you know, customer service, building a website, putting products online, you know, depending on what you're doing. And uh, I, I never quite expected that to take as much time as it does. Um, but yeah, I just, I love what I do and I'm very grateful to be able to do what I do. I'm very grateful to the community that's been able to come around me and, and support me and being able to do this. I think it's super awesome. Um, and kind of watch the whole process grow. Cause yeah, going into this, I had never worked for myself. I'd never, you know, run my own business or I've always had side hustles, but never quite to this extent. So it's been really cool learning about it and, um, learning how to grow it and maintain it and seeing how things have kind of changed and developed as, as I've gone along, you know, when I first started, like I said, I was like, I'll take all the commissions. Like I, I'm scared. I, I need to be able to get, you know, whatever I can get. Cause I know it's hard. Um, and then just as I've gotten more familiar with what my goals are and what I want to do, I, uh, have been able to kind of pace myself and learn to pace myself a little bit better. It's really easy to get burnt out by getting overloaded. Gotcha. So, um, where do people go to follow you to see uh, your work and or reach out to you at? So I mostly post on Instagram reels and then I also do TikTok and Facebook. So it's Adeline Robinson art. Sometimes there's underscores for Instagram in the middle, but um, yeah, that's one of the big things that takes up a lot of my time is uh, recording the time-lapse videos for the artwork and then making reels and um, you know, working with that algorithm. But yeah, I try to do process videos of all of the pieces that I do. So that way people can see the, you know, the artist behind it and what it takes to make it. Cause I get a lot of people that um, will come up to my table and they, they don't always understand what goes into uh, the pieces that they're, they're holding. So it's kind of fun uh, being able to see how many hours goes into it. And I try to share as much as I can with folks, you know, this is how I did it. This is what I used. So I always try to be a, an open book. All right. Um, well, I guess on that note, uh, Thanks for coming on the show. No, absolutely. Thank you for having me. It was it was fun chatting, and yeah, feel if you guys ever have any other questions about artwork or or any stuff like that, feel free to just let me know. But yeah, it's been fun and fun chatting. All right. Thank you for coming on. Thanks. Have a good night. You too.